what is going on everyone, this is Wicked and tonight I'm going to show you an in-depth overview of the unofficial Resurrection remix for Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. Now at this time when I'm recording this video, the ROM is in an alpha status. That means it's not suitable for daily usage at all, considering that it doesn't have working calls, SMSs, Bluetooth along with other major important features. That doesn't mean you can't flash it or see how this ROM is going to look like on this device. And that's why I'm here tonight to make this review about the installation procedure, customization options, performance status and why not battery life of this amazing ROM. You'll see that there are some major differences compared to the Lineage OS ROM, the majority of them are related to the customization options. Yesterday I made a video about the unofficial Lineage OS release, you can find it in the card section if you want to make an idea on it. Now currently the ROM is only available for the Galaxy S8 Plus, probably in the following days it will be released also for the Galaxy S8. So as always in order to install this ROM you'll need TWRP. If you don't know what TWRP is or how to install it on your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, check the video in the card section. Now, a little disclaimer. You will definitely need an Android backup of your current configuration before proceeding to the next step. The most important partition to be backed up is the EFS one. I'm not telling you this for nothing, since this is an unofficial alpha release, many things can of course go wrong, including the Android backup restoring process. I couldn't encounter any issues with it so far, but it's better to take caution and also copy the TWRP folder from your internal storage to a safe location onto your personal computer. Ok, so after you've done that, you'll need to wipe your device. So click wipe and swipe to factory reset. Then go to install and select the resurrection remix zip and swipe to install. After the process is completed, go back and install the open gaps package. As always, all the links I used in my video are listed in the description, so make sure to check them out if you're brave enough. And now, finally, the installation process is done. Click reboot system. The phone may auto reboot a couple of times, but don't worry, it is perfectly normal. The first booting process will also take some time, so be patient and enjoy the beautiful Resurrection Remix boot animation. Boot it up and let me give you my first honest impression. I've been using this ROM on my Galaxy S4 for a long time. When you say Resurrection Remix, you stay customization at its finest ultimate level. And uh, this version of it is no exception. Lineage OS is plain simple, just a couple of minimal tweaks, but this one, which is also based on Lineage OS, offers you the biggest and heaviest variety of customization options for your phone. Let's start with the Substratum Team Engine, which surprisingly works as it should be on this ROM. I applied this uh, Grace Substratum theme with all the overlays and the process went smooth and fast and I have to admit it looks kinda good and minimalist. So Substratum Team Engine compatibility checked and working great. But the beauty of this wall theming process doesn't stop here. This was only the beginning. The beauty will appear in the settings app, configuration tab. Here you'll get tons of customization options, without any exaggeration, tons of them, regarding the status bar, panels, recent tab, quick settings, lock screen, notification bar, gestures, navigation bar, interface, animations, Literally what you could possibly imagine or not can be found here. I will try to make a brief walkthrough of what you can find here and eventually when I'll have at least a beta release of this ROM I will consider making a full walkthrough of every single feature present here. I guess that would be a really great way to show you the power of this ROM. So, starting off with the status bar tab, you will get various status bar related customization options. Of course, clock positioning, font styles, show date and select the date style. Also, you can activate a brand resurrection remix logo and color it as you prefer. If you don't like the logo, you can choose from a large variety of other ones. Emoji, cat, google, spider, etc. Battery icon is also customizable, whether if we're talking about the percentage style, the battery bar color, the positioning, the variety of available options is immense. In the system icons menu, I want to try the battery percentage of the Bluetooth device you're connected to, but the sound and also the percentage didn't work at all, so I guess that's another bug which needs to be fixed. Of course, you can set the temperature to be shown in the status bar and also the network traffic along with a custom carrier name. 
you got the idea. Everything that can be possibly customized into the status bar is present in the status bar customization tab. Absolutely everything. Into the panel section, the ROM will let you play with all the features of the notification bar, whether if we're talking about the quick settings, shade stroke, header images, which contain a huge variety of dynamic pictures to choose from, or even various icons that can be added or deleted from it. A cool feature which I find it really useful is the kill app button while long pressing a notification to completely kill an app. Now into the next step, the recent app panel. Here you'll get hundreds and hundreds of features to choose from, starting from the way you see the recent app panel, going through the clear app button and how it animates and reacts to the user interaction, ending with four different styles like OmniSwitch and Slim Recent Bar. Next up we have quick settings options where you can customize the number of rows and columns they will be displayed in the notification bar, animations of the icons themselves showing up in the notification bar, moving on, the lock screen, oh god, gotta get some air because there are so many of them. Here everything is self-explanatory. You can change various graphical tweaks regarding the lock, user interface, height clock, height date, this music visualizer, change the clock and date font and so on and so forth. Alongside, you can also choose whatever color you want for every part of the lock screen, whether it's the clock, date, shortcuts, etc. In the gestures tab, you can find various techniques on how to open up apps or activities using gestures, activate app circle bar or pie control, which is a really nice touch. In the buttons tab, you can customize the navigation bar. Here I played with the settings a little bit, especially because I didn't know how to switch the back button with the recent tab one. Eventually I got it as I wanted. You can also add various shortcuts into the power menu like screen record, screenshot and sound modules and uh, launch the inexistent camera by double pressing the power key. Animations tab is self-explanatory, you can set up which animations you want for the windows, transitions, etc. And into the interface tab you can tweak various user interface options like the font size, DPI, blur, expanded desktop, headset and call settings and so on and so forth. Finally. That was a quick glance, if I can call it like that, on the customization options present in Resurrection Remix RAW. Now, apart from that, the gaming performance is still great, as I showed yesterday on Lineage OS, the gameplay of the Need for Speed No Limits was smooth and faster than on a stock Samsung ROM. Mostly, the same bugs which you can find on the Lineage OS are also present here, so there's no need to cover them again. What surprised me in a good way was the battery life. I started playing with this ROM at around 85% and after more than 50 minutes the battery percentage shows a value of 76%. So that's approximately 10-11% to per hour which is way better than the 21% per hour drain I got on the Lynch OS yesterday. One major disadvantage is the RAM management, but that's something you'll need to get used to when having tons of customization options to choose from. It stays at around 61% full, but you know, unused RAM is wasted RAM anyways. So to sum up, my conclusion is that this ROM could get really interesting in the future, taking in mind how customizable fast and smooth it is. Unfortunately, even though the devs will get the camera and another major box fixed, the quality won't ever be the same as it is on a stock firmware, so you'll need to take that into consideration. At the end of the day, this ROM is based on Lineage OS, but I have to say, I had a really great time reviewing it, compared to the video I did yesterday for example, and it really made me remember the old days when I had Resurrection Remix running on my S4. This is a great ROM and this project shouldn't be abandoned. This was the overview for today, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate the bell icon so that you'll be notified with all my uploads. I am Wicked and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Get Wicked and on Google Plus at Wicked is here. If you like my video don't forget to press that thumbs up button, as always, until next time, take care. Wicked is out. Bye-bye.